Hey guys, today I'm going to present the radical concept that Magic the Gathering Pro, the system, should not exist. We see Wizard of the Coast go to more and more commercialized. They have started to sponsor very big YouTube channels to make cosplays where the audience, their audience is 95% female. So we could get more females into Magic. They have sponsored Hearthstone players to promote Magic. In fact, three out of the eight people at the beta draft, the showcase, were Hearthstone players. Two of them who had quit Magic to play Hearthstone. Now today I'm going to talk about our newest Pro Hall of Fame member, Lee Xian Tian, and his recent tweet. GP cut, check. Prize cut, check. After this announcement, the only thing I can think of saving APAC com pro community would be removing pro points from GP. It's a long shot. So here we have someone who's dedicated his entire life and seems kind of desperate. He seems very desperate because this is his livelihood. So unlike me or you, where we have other jobs and we those other jobs pay hopefully every two weeks, or maybe we own a business, his income is solely based, or let's say 90% based on going to events and winning them and doing well. Made... Maybe Wizard of the Coast needs the money for more Silver Showcase and sponsor more Hearthstone streamers. Latin America lost two out of three GPs. We already were in the long shot. Next year, we will not be around. You're the last APAC into the Hall of Fame. So it's not just Asia. It is also South America. And it's also Europe. And now why is this the case? It's because... Channel Fireball, which is an American company in California, they have a monopoly on all GPs. So if they don't feel like going to Azar, they don't feel like going to Europe, they don't feel like going to South America, no GP. You're not allowing the natural... So let's say a ton of people in South America want another GP. Well, too bad because Channel Fireball is not going there. Let's say a lot of people in Asia want a GP. They have the attendance number. It actually would be a profitable event. And you are a big store in Asia and you want to host a GP. Well, too bad. You, you can't because there's a monopoly going on. Monopolies are very bad for the consumer. And that's what we have in GP. GP attendance is down. Prices are up. To It's a death spiral. The service goes down. The cost of the event goes up and the attendance goes down. Therefore, the cost of the event has to go up more to cover the loss of the participants. And you're in this death spiral, and that's what the GP events are currently in. It's game over for a lot of people. Since four years, Wizard of Coast has been closing stores that do not comply with the minimal requirements for sales, and now they are playing cutting us. Uh, this is one of the biggest interesting points about Wizard of the Coast as a card game. No other card game requires as much as Wizard of the Coast in terms of judges, in terms of uh, space, in terms of activities. You have to register your players. Pokemon does not do that. Yu-Gi-Oh! does not do that. Like To get the promos, it's really, really easy to get them. In fact, it is harder to turn them away than to receive it. My friend, uh, his store... He no longer does card fight or what's the other one with the dragons, the Bushiro games. But Bushiro keeps sending him promos and posters, which he doesn't even do anything. It just sits in a box that he puts it in. So, yeah, I mean, wow. Imagine being a Hall of Famer and now having a... You know, having the money, having the incentive to go to events, and then the there's no events to go to. Uh, GPs are super American, 27 American GPs, 12 Europe ones, and very few Asia, and very few South America. It's funny, right? 
It is funny. What do you expect to happen when you give a monopoly to an American company? Did you expect that American company to somehow expand overseas when it doesn't want to? Times have gotten very desperate for magic stores. I know I have a magic store, but like Rudy, I don't have the overhead. I don't have. I have one employee, but she works in marketing anyway. And this is kind of our training grounds to have her work on Snapchat and stuff like that. But you have a very desperate situation for many store owners, and it is made more desperate by the fact that Wizard Coast will sell directly from Amazon.、Uh, Sports and More is a distributor, and you have to compete with them. Plus, you have business models like Rudy's, where he sells so many boxes. Uh, it is very difficult to make any money on a box that is not pre-order. So people can still make money on pre-order because that's there's no cash issue. But holding boxes, running events, especially running events, are very expensive. You have to pay the employee. You have to provide the space. In Texas, you have to have air conditioning. You have to provide various products that may or may not sell, like sleeves and. Uh, binders and things are singles, right? A lot of times you have to carry standard singles, which will be decimated if you don't sell them in a certain time period. And your customer is always like, "Why are you selling me this box? I want to buy from Amazon." Or, "Hey, I can get it Amazon Prime. I can buy this single online. I can buy it from so and so." So it's very ungrateful. What you're doing is you're providing them a space that they would. Never have otherwise. I mean, they can't go to Walmart, they can't go to Target, and all they do is complain about you providing them that space. So, I remember a post in Reddit where a store owner tried to charge five dollars an hour for a play space, which is, it's kind of like he must have owned a, a video game, like you know, in、uh, computers, right? When you play League of Legends, there used to be a place called Battle Bunker, Texas Battle Bunker. And that place, you would pay them like seven dollars, and you would just、uh, play League of Legends. That was their business model. They got flayed on Reddit pretty badly, and they had to close because people were upset. They were charging five dollars. Imagine that. Imagine store owner making five dollars an hour to provide a comfortable, relaxed place to play Magic: The Gathering in a meeting place.、Uh, so just like. We see community civic centers; they still exist, but the funding is not there because no one uses them.、Uh, this magic game stores are a place for people to meet.、Uh, how important are magic pros? I would say that they are a dying breed. You won't see that many more magic pros.、Uh, GP attendance is down. Prize support is down. You, if GP attendance goes down, you can't possibly have more prize support. The prize has to be cut. That's why it's cut. If you have a monopoly and the monopoly is located in, in the U.S., you're not going to have more South America, Asia, or Europe GPs because they're not going to want to do it. It's too much. Like it's a lot easier for them to do one in North America where they can travel to. There's no visa issues.、Uh, they can even drive it, drive to it, depending on where it is. Then to travel for everyone on Channel Fireball to get a plane ticket to Asia and then host an event there. You have to fly the artist. You have to fly. I mean, it is pretty. It's a very expensive. It's very expensive. So they cut GPs in the U.S. twenty-seven to twenty-four. In Europe, it is being cut sixteen to eleven. So that is a huge cut. Asia, it's just being cut out, and South America, it's just being cut out. So the pro tour dream is not. It should be. Told that this is not a perfect. You're not going to make enough money to make a living, unless maybe you're the top ten players, and even then, you barely break. Like you barely have a job better than Walmart. Now I know a lot of you, a lot of people say this is the dream. This is the dream. The dream has to end sometime because it is not trending in the right direction. So let's say you work at a company. And you look around, and the people in the company are leaving. They're being laid off. Their people are getting paid cuts. They're cutting your benefits. There's no 401k anymore. Would you still continue with this company? 
because that's what you would be doing as a pro Magic player. Times are really desperate. Uh, these pros are always speaking out. Uh, pay the pros. I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard this for the last five years. Nothing has changed. Um, and it's because the major consumers of Magic the Gathering, they would rather see someone with 2.6 million subscribers make a cosplay makeup video on Vraska than they would of this guy making a deck. That is the future of Magic. The future of Magic is Amazon. The future of Magic is Rudy. The future of Magic is Magic Arena. And we don't need Magic Pro to make that future happen. Anyway, that is my unpopular opinion, I'm sure. Bye, guys.